Thank you very much. <coughs> it's my pleasure to be here. Um, I'm going to share with you some of my early experience with the use of this device. And uh, thanks to Derek for allowing me access to it. I'll let you know how I got here. <coughs> I practice in Calgary, Canada. I have a uh, orthopedic practice that involves, uh, I see a lot of young, active patients with hip arthritis. And I was kind of pushed towards the hip resurfacing idea back in the early 2000s when I kept seeing patients who were really looking for an alternative to hip replacement. And I had the opportunity to go and visit Derek in Birmingham in 2002, and I learned a better way for treating hip arthritis than what I had learned up till then, and that was to try resurfacing. So a nice visit with Derek and Ronan Tracy, and I learned to put away the saw when I was doing total hip replacement. Indebted to these fellows, I have had really good success with Birmingham hip over the past 20 years. But as you've heard, there are issues with metal-on-metal -metal hip resurfacing. There are some cases of metallosis, altered response to metal debris. We're now limited in our sizes, so 48 is the smallest size Birmingham hip. And still in my part of the country, it's relatively contraindicated to do ladies uh, with the metal-on-metal -metal resurfacing. So for quite a few years now, I've been limited in treating young ladies with hip arthritis and not having access to an implant for resurfacing for these patients. So <clears throat> when I heard about the development of this product, I was very enthusiastic and keen, and Derek was kind enough to uh, allow me to consider using this. I was happy that it was these gentlemen involved in the development of it because the Birmingham hip was an excellent uh, product, and I trust their science, their um, uh, processes, and that sort of thing, so it gave me some comfort to consider this. Um, there are some similarities and differences between this implant and how I use it compared to my Birmingham hip patients. Uh, this, this list, unfortunately, the similarities aren't that many. Um, patient selection is relatively the same, and that was pointed out. Right patients. Uh, I, I use a posterior approach for all my hip resurfacings. The femoral head preparation is more or less the same. The difference is, well, <coughs> now I could offer this uh, hip resurfacing implant to ladies again, which was good in my practice. In Canada, it still does not have full Health Canada approval, so I have to request special access for every patient who I want to use this implant on. That hopefully will change in the next couple of months as we're getting close to where it will likely have Health Canada approval. Where I practice, I'm in a public hospital. I had to get permission from my health authority to use this new device, and that was a bit of a process. But when I pointed out the gender bias in resurfacing that ladies were not able to access a better way of treating their hip arthritis relative to men, uh, it struck a chord with several of the people on that committee that uh, ladies also deserved an opportunity to have the best operation for their hip arthritis. So luckily that... Uh, solve that problem. I've been using the TE Nav that Derek's video just showed. It's an elegant mechanical alignment guide that helps me with placement of the cups in terms of the abduction angle. So that's a little bit of a difference compared to my Birmingham hip uh, technique. And as he pointed out too, there are now some holes in the trial component that I have to use for creating indents in the bone just to remind you, the spikes on that cup, we need to prepare the bone surface for the spikes, and I need to take time to put the trial component in exactly the alignment I want, because once you drill those holes, you are committed to that position. It's pretty much a one and done. You're, you're not going to be able to manipulate this cup once you've seeded it into the acetabulum. So that's a slight difference in the technique. <coughs> but overall, it's a, it's a resurfacing implant. I use the same approach with a few nuances in terms of placing the cup. So I'll just share with you some of my early, <coughs> early cases. Um, we started identifying some patients who might be candidates for this implant uh, a few months in advance, and we arranged with uh, Derek that we could uh, coordinate schedules and have him come over for the first implantation. This 48-year-old lady, she's a phys ed teacher, super active young lady with bilateral hip arthritis. She was very keen on resurfacing from her own research, and she was quite willing to be a participant as one of the first uh, implanted patients. These are her preoperative x-rays. 
This is after the surgery. This is my surgical team with Derek. Uh, they were all quite happy to meet him. We had a wonderful visit, and uh, I had lots of people helping me get the cup uh, component positioning correct that day. Uh, Sharaf was there, as was Roger Aspen, uh, engineering uh, specialist. <coughs> These are her po post-operative films. Uh, so that case was done in November last year, and she has uploaded her story onto social media, and it's quite a nice story that she uh, tells, and she's back to virtually all her activities. And <coughs> I had another patient. It was quite an interesting visit with this young lady. Both of her patients, sorry, both of her parents were patients of mine. They had both had Birmingham hips. So when she started to get symptoms of hip arthritis, her mother insisted that she come and see me. We had a nice discussion. She was very keen on hip resurfacing because of the results that her parents had experienced. She was not the ideal candidate. Lots of potential challenges here. She has a large subchondral cyst and somewhat dysplastic acetabulum. Uh, I was keen on considering her for the poly motion, but um, concerned because of the quality of the bone in the femoral head. So in this patient, we arranged CT scans. I sent them to England. Uh, Derek had a chance to look at these pictures, and Roger put together a 3D planning on the CT scan for cup placement and femoral head placement on this lady. And <clears throat> collectively, we thought it was a reasonable thing to go ahead, and these are her post-operative films. And I can tell you she's done extremely well. She's had no complications to date, but it's still early, but uh, very successful so far. One other patient that I'll share. Um, these are her preoperative films. This is a patient who is, at this time, 39 years old. I did her hip replacement 10 years ago. I put in one of those log splitting stems that uh, Derek mentioned. <laughs> uh, at the time I did her total hip, she was 30 years old and she was planning a family, so she wasn't a candidate at that time for a resurfacing, a, not a metal on metal resurfacing. So the total hip was done. She did really well. She came back at this time. She was really interested in resurfacing. Again, n maybe not the ideal candidate. She'd had a previous pelvic osteotomy and there was some retained hardware, but she was really keen on the idea of resurfacing, and I was too. Um, again, we did CT scan analysis, and Roger was uh, instrumental in helping me come up with a plan that we could probably do this without having to remove the pelvic screws, which any of you who've tried to remove these pelvic screws, they're hard to find. because They often are seized and really difficult to remove. So I was happy that he came up with a, a plan where we could use this cup, uh, modify the rotation of it slightly, and potentially avoid encountering either of these uh, large pelvic screws. And we followed that plan interoperatively, and I was able to do resurfacing with this cup and avoid contacting either of the screws, and she's gone on to do well also. So I don't have a lot of numbers. <coughs> I've only been doing this since November last year. I'm up to 19 patients, uh, 19 resurfacings. 18 of them are in women. One is in a man who had renal disease, some is contraindicated to metal on metal. I'll admit that uh, resurfacing remains a very polarizing topic in our arthroplasty world. It's really comfortable to talk to a group of people who are believers <laughs> rather than the usual. Uh, as mentioned, sometimes it really does make sense to do resurfacing when you have uh, crazy femurs and weird hardware. Um, it obviously makes sense in some circumstances, but uh, for me, resurfacing is uh, also the way to go for all these young active patients. And I again would say stop amputating the femoral head. Thank you very much.